welcome to my channel. My name is Julielle and in this channel I teach English. Yes, I am Brazilian and I became fluent after spending six months in the US. But before that I was studying on my own in Brazil and I developed some skills and strategies to teach myself and also other people that have sometimes trouble learning English. And in today's video we are going to talk about prepositions. Specifically the prepositions for, to, by, and with, and when to use those. Now, if you're interested and liked this lesson already, don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and check out my Instagram, o segredo da fluência underline inglês. First, let's talk about the preposition to. Some verbs require the to infinitive. What do I mean by that? So sometimes you can say, I like running or I like to run. The verb like accept ing and also the infinitive to. But there are some verbs that specifically call for the infinitive to. For example, the verbs need and want. So I'm going to give you phrases, examples. I need to cook. I want to run. You can also use the preposition to when a person is receiving the action or the object is receiving the action. What I mean by that? So let's see the phrase example. I gave a necklace to Drielli. Here the preposition to, it is referring that Drielli is receiving the action, right? So I gave, the verb gave, right, is acting upon Drielli. So she is receiving the action. So I gave a necklace to Drielli. Now, if you're also talking about time, you can use the preposition to. So the bus leaves 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Or I'm leaving my house a quarter to 3 p.m. Here, the preposition to is indicating time. After some nouns that show movement and direction, you can also use the preposition to. You can take the hall to get to the reception. So you can take the hall to get to the reception. So here we have two twos. Now let's take a look into the example number two. This highway will take you to Louisiana. This highway will take you to Louisiana. So it's taking you to somewhere. It here it's showing you movement, direction, because it's taking you to another city. So then we can use the preposition to. Now let's move on to the preposition for. When do we use it? So for, think about this way. I'm going to use the preposition for when it's beneficial to someone. So for example, I took the dog for a walk. So the dog is, you know, kind of happy and it's, beneficial to him going on a walk. So, because it is beneficial to him, I use a preposition for. Can you teach for me? Can you teach for me? Right, so maybe I'm sick and I can't go to school and I have a class to teach but I can't and I have to ask a sub to go my place. So every time you want to say in my place for me, you say the preposition for. Can you go to the grocery store for me, right? So here I am benefiting somehow and also I'm asking the person to go in my place. And also you can use the preposition for when we're talking about purpose, the reason for you to do something. So for example, what are you here for? This is a very common question in English. What are you here for? or why are you here for? What is the reason, the purpose of your presence here? I'm going to Brazil for my family. So here, I'm not going to Brazil instead of my family or in the place of my family. But my family maybe needs me, right? They need me. So I'm going for them. They are the reason and the purpose of my travel to Brazil. When we are talking about duration, we can also use the preposition for. So this webinar will last for 30 minutes. This YouTube video will last for 12 minutes. 
I'm not sure, I'm guessing. So here I'm giving you, you know, the duration of these events. In this case, the webinar and the YouTube video. And if we're talking about a formal setting, such as writing, you can use for in the place of because. So every time you want to say because, you can also use for. Why did you clean your shoes? Well, for it to be clean. She's walking the dog for her mom to cook. So she's walking the dog because her mom, you know, wants to cook, needs to cook. Also, you can use a preposition for when you're talking about exchange, exchanging of something. Or also, you can get two things for one price, a very cheap price. And you're going to see this um, sentence is a lot in stores, especially on Black Friday. So two shirts for $10, or two shoes for $25, two courses for only $60. So here I'm talking about quantity, right? So you get two, three or four, it doesn't really matter the number, but then I say the price for them or the, their price. So you can get two shirts for only $10. Now, before we move on to the preposition by and with, I'm gonna give you two examples so see if you can understand the difference between them two. So, the first phrase, I brought dinner to you. I brought dinner to you. And the second phrase, I brought dinner for you. What is the difference between those two sentences? Well, when we are saying to, we are focusing on the movement and direction. So let's say you asked me to buy you dinner. So I brought it to you. I went to the store, picked it up, walked, 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 and I brought it to you. So the to is focusing and showing more about the movement, the direction of me going, right? When I say I brought dinner for you, I'm trying to be nice. Maybe you had a hard day, maybe you're so hungry and you didn't have time to go out for dinner. And I just wanted to be nice and friendly and I wanted to do a favor. So I brought dinner for you. Here I'm not focusing on me going to the restaurant or cooking a meal and bringing to you by car, bus or whatever. But instead I am focusing on the action itself. I brought it for you because I just wanted to be nice. Now, if you got those two meanings, it's time to move on to the next two prepositions, by and with. So when do we use each one of them? So let's start with the preposition by. We can use it when we are talking about time as well, but in a different setting. So let's say your mom tells you, you have to be home by 10.30. You have to be home by Monday. I will be back in the office by Tuesday. So here by I have right afterwards a time expression either 1030 right the numbers or the weekdays Monday Tuesday also another use for the preposition by when we are talking about a passive voice but what is passive voice so I teach English I teach English is an active voice because we have the subject the verb and the object the object is receiving the action of the verb. Now, if I want to put this sentence in a passive voice, I say, English is taught by Drielli. English is taught by Drielli. I'm going to give you another example. Drielli wrote a book. Drielli wrote a book. The passive voice will be, the book was written by Drielli. The book originally was our object and now became our subject, comes first, therefore comes first. The book, and then we need a, an auxiliary verb in this case because the main verb is in the past, I need a past auxiliary verb, so was. The book was. And then we need a past participle form of my verb, so write wrote and written. So the book was written and then we need a preposition by and the person who wrote that book. Now if you think you got it, I'm going to give you another example and try to see if you get it right. 
So Drielli drank tea. Drielli drank tea. What is the passive voice of this phrase? So the tea was drunk by Drielli. And to know more about passive voice, you gotta understand and know verbs and all of their verb tenses. Let's move on to the next category. So you can use the preposition by to tell how to use something. So I can say, I open the boxes by using a knife. By using a knife. I teach English online by using a laptop. Also, when we are talking about transportation, movements and directions. Also, when we are not using determiners such as the, a and n. I travel to Brazil by plane. I go to work by car. I sent a letter by email. And here, we don't have determiners. So that's how you can use the preposition by. You can also say by myself, which means alone, on my own. So I teach English by myself. I went to Texas by myself. So by here is a preposition, but when it's combined to myself, it means alone, on my own. I had no company. You can also use the preposition by when we are talking about next to, beside, or at the side of. So, where is the grocery store? Oh, the grocery store is by Walmart. Where is your house? My house is by the park. So, by, next to, beside, at the side of. Or, you can also use the preposition by to talk about something that was made by someone or a company. So, coronavirus was made by China. The song was written by Taylor Swift. Cardigan is a song by Taylor Swift. So here the by, it means simply that it was made by this person or this company or in this case, the country. Now let's move on to the preposition with our last preposition. So the first category I want to talk about, when we're talking about company, accompanying some, someone or something. So let's say, I went to the wedding with Alex. So me and Alex, we went together and he was my companion, right? He was the person who went with me. So in this case, I can say with. Or also, I like chocolate with ice cream. So one is accompanying of the other. So I can say with. We can also use with for feelings and reactions. I am mad with you. I am disappointed with you. Those are feelings. I am surprised with you. So here now I have a reaction. I am very surprised with technology. And then this is a very common one that I tell my husband pretty much every day. I'm happy with you. I am happy with you. And this is a feeling. You can also use with so when we want to say by means or using, so for example, the example with the boxes, I open the boxes with a knife. So here I can say by using a knife or with a knife. I wear sandals with skirts, right? So one accompany the other and also I use skirts with sandals or instead of saying because of, I can use a preposition with. With all the murders TV shows I've been watching, I bought a taser. With all the murder TV shows I have been watching, I bought a taser, which is actually true. And the last one, I want to ask you something. So do you think we say, I am married to Alex? I am married with Alex. So in your head, because you're trying to translate from Portuguese to English, you're thinking with. So you are married with Alex. Amanda is married with John, right? No, this is not right. It's wrong. Because here we use the preposition to. I am married to Alex. Amanda is married to John. 
so here we don't use with and that's a very common mistake and that's it we covered all four prepositions and I hope to learn something if you did don't forget to thumbs up this video leave down below here in the comment section if you have a suggestion something you want to learn or what you thought about the video also don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber I'm also on Instagram so o segredo da fluência underline inglês and I'm always there I'm always here teaching English this channel from now on will be only in English so all my videos teaching English will be in English now when I teach English every Friday that will be in Portuguese I hope you liked this video and I'll see you next. Bye.